From a legal standpoint, I don't recommend you or anyone else try to create what I'm about to create without being a qualified electrician. All right, welcome to Tips and Tricks. We're gonna run up to the hardware store, grab some things we need. When we get back, we're gonna build a real estate. Alright, we got everything we need from the hardware store. We got a box, a cover, an extension cord, and a dimmer switch. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to take this dimmer switch, we're going to cut it about here, right in half. Now we're going to strip these wires out, peel them in half. Same on the male end. We're going to punch out the hole in the box. We're going to run our male and female end wires through the hole. Okay, now we're going to take one wire from each side. Doesn't matter which one because it's alternating current. And we're going to connect it to the dimmer switch. Use a wire nut, cap it on there. We are going to then grab one wire from the female side, hook it into the other wire on the dimmer switch. Yep, so it doesn't matter which wire goes where, as long as you have one wire from your male end and one wire from your female end connecting to the switch. What that does is it breaks the current or regulates it in this case. We are now going to take our remaining wires, one wire from the male end, one wire from the female end, and connect those together. We're going to pull our wires back through the box. Going to screw our dimmer switch in here. Now we're going to pop this off, it pulls right off, this thing goes right over the top of it. Okay, we're going to pop this cap back on. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to ohm it out to see what kind of current we are pushing through it. So now that we got it all assembled, I stuck a couple probes for my meter in here to show you guys how the voltage is regulated. As you turn that dimmer switch up, it starts picking up some volts and should go all the way up to full capacity. It'll be 120 volts or whatever my house is running, 110, 120. Uh, for a visual representation, I plugged this heat light in so you can see, if you turn it down, you get less heat, up you get more heat. So the reason I prefer making these to buying a rheostat from say ZooMed or something like that is because the rheostats from them are around $35, $40. I got all the parts to make this for right around 10 or 11 It's really you know, economical and more importantly than price, it's way more adjustable. I can turn this thing all the way down, I can turn it all the way up. Um, so it really lets you hit whatever temperature you want. Remember always to use a thermostat with these though because you want that thermostat as a backup for this and you want this as a backup for the thermostat. It's kind of a double redundancy, but it works well. Thanks again for tuning in to Tips and Tricks. 
On the next episode, we're going to be showing you how to make a low-budget room humidifier for your snake room.